So once we get that view, we're going to move to the parasternal short axis. So the probe is in the same position on the chest, but what we want to do is identify our parasternal long axis view, and then we rotate the indicator to about one o'clock, so about 90 degrees clockwise to identify some short axis views of the heart. And you can see here, this is how we're slicing. We're getting cross sections, again, focused. The central focus is on the left ventricle, but we'll see other structures as well. So let's look at some live clips. So once we've identified that parasternal a long axis view with the indicator at around 9 30 10 o'clock we rotate we stay in that exact same position rotating 90 degrees clockwise so our indicator is at about one o'clock and then we get a cross section of the left ventricle so here we're at about the mitral valve level and here's a nice labeled diagram and if we're doing this image properly the structures of the right heart should be up in this corner we can see a portion of the descending thoracic aorta mitral valve and we want to try to orient this so that the ventricle itself is as round as we can possibly get it. We want it a perfect cross section. If we rotate too far one direction or the other, we can cause some false positive findings. So I will be nitpicky on that point to some degree. Now we can take different slices in a little closer to the sternum or farther away from the sternum to image different structures in particular. So if we slide or fan the probe in a little bit closer to the sternum, we make a slice a little more along the base of the heart where the aortic valve is our focal point in this image. And you can see compared to the mitral valve, the aortic valve has a smaller diameter, a more dense outline, and if we get a really nice view, we can see all three cusps and the little Mercedes-Benz sign of the aortic valve. If we have the cross section of the aortic valve here, then behind that is the left atrium. The structures of the right heart wrap over top of the aortic valve coming from this side of the screen to this side of the screen. So we have right atrium, tricuspid valve, the blood flows from the right atrium through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle here, and then we can often just see a little hint of the pulmonic valve here as well. Sometimes that one we don't see as well in transthoracic echo. Uh, here's a nice labeled diagram of what we're seeing. Here we can see this in a still image. This is a fantastic little Mercedes-Benz sign, tricuspid, pulmonic, left atrium, descending thoracic aorta. So again, ultrasound is a lot about knowing normal, having normal images and findings locked into your brain. So when abnormal is present, it stands out and you recognize it quickly. Remembering blood flow goes this direction over top of the aorta valve in the peristernal short axis. So that will help you remember tricuspid to pulmonic and right ventricle up here. From the aortic position, if we just slide a little bit away from the sternum or fan a little bit away from the sternum, then we should come out to where we see the mitral valve in cross section. You can see much bigger diameter. We see muscular walls of the left ventricle and we see this kind of fish mouth appearance of the left ventricle and we see a little bit more of the right ventricle coming into view in this corner. But we should still see a nice pretty round shape to the left ventricle and a rounded edge here at the inner ventricular septum. That's an important finding. And here that is in a still image again. Here's that fish mouth, nice round left ventricle, and we can roughly eyeball the diameters of these and recognize the sizes and relative findings. As we fan just a little bit farther away from the sternum, from the mitral valve, and this is, I'm talking millimeters, we should get to about the mid ventricle portion. And this is probably one of the highest yield views in the peristernal short axis, where we see a nice cross section of the left ventricle. We can see the papillary muscles, and we see that they're pretty much parallel parallel and that tells us that we're slicing it in a nice cross section. It's nice and round and the septum is rounded. It's not being compressed by high pressures or volumes in the right ventricle. It's a little corner of the right ventricle up here. This is also a good area to assess just left ventricular systolic function. Okay, so that's the papillary muscle or mid ventricular slice in the peristernal short axis view. And then in some patients we can slide out even further and get out towards the apex where now we're past. We don't see papillary muscles anymore. The right ventricle's pretty much gone out of view. There's a little corner of it left and we just see a Again, a nice cross section of the left ventricular apex. So those are kind of the different slices we can get through the peristernal short axis. From there, we just take that view, rotate 90 degrees. So indicator is at about one o'clock. We want the ventricle to look like a circle. We can fan in towards the sternum.
to get a view of the aortic valve and cross section. We fan away, we get the mitral valve and cross section. It's the fish mouth view. A little further out here is the mid ventricle where we see the papillary muscles. And we may go out even further to see the ventricular apex. So we can always get a prettier parasternal views with this position. And maybe I can get a better aortic valve view, a little better. And on the sides of the aortic valve we see tricuspid and pulmonic valves over here. So let's just put color on those. Should all be red coming towards our transducer. Should all be blue over here. And it is.